feeling that I would probably scare Ted Bundy's spirit. Also, please be kind to each other. Please be kind. This world is hard enough. We don't need more attention. So today is Wednesday, the 24th of June. You know, like before I sit down to film, sometimes I'll like run an errand or two just to like get out and reset my energy or whatever, and I did that today. After what happened, I feel like I just need to like, this is crystal water the cat made me. I'm just gonna cleanse my aura a little bit, some citrine for some inspiration and some amethyst, and maybe I need to like, cleanse my aura with these for a backup, just to make sure it gets any ickiness off of me. So rewinding to earlier what happened, which is why Kat is <laughs> currently texting me, asking me <laughs> if I'm okay. I was at the grocery store, right? Minding my own business, doing my thing. I decided to go to the grocery store to um, pick up a couple things so that I didn't have to go out later because I don't know how long I'm going to be filming for you guys. I go to go down the cracker aisle. I'm literally buying. I, I actually was going to get Ritz, but I changed my mind and got Wheat Thins. Um, I went down the cracker aisle and turned around. And as I was walking down the, the cracker aisle, I realized there was a 50-year-old man tall, thin, white guy, bald, big ears sticking way out. And he was calling this young black kid, like probably 13, 14, definitely preteen, uh, every like racial slur under the sun. And, um, and um, I told myself, okay, if this is still happening by the time I, I get off this aisle, she's gonna have to get in the middle because I am not the kind that can sit on the sideline and just uh, like watch someone get hurt there's no way in hell so I go to get my crackers I come back down the aisle it's still going on it's happening in front of the deli department meet and um, I tell this white guy that's like the adult I was like just walk away like just be the adult and walk away He's like, you don't know what happened you don't know what he said I was like I don't care you're an adult and he's a child Work on your throat chakra. Give it some cowbell. And he wouldn't, he wouldn't. And he's like pushing his fist back. He's like gonna knock this kid out. Like he's saying he's gonna make him unrecognizable. His mom is not gonna recognize him. Still throwing every racial slur under the sun. And I'm sitting there like, this is happening. I looked at the guy and like, okay, I'm, I'm a Taurus. If you haven't ever done your astrological chart before, I'll put the link below. You should do it because you'll understand a lot about yourself if you do. I'm a Taurus. My communication is in Aries. I have a, a lot of houses in Aries, okay? And I'm a Taurus, which means I will, I will stampede you without like looking. I, I'm like, I will, like the goal objective at hand and I will not look back and I won't see where you went till I'm done. So I went red because this guy was gonna like beat this kid and it was all a race issue, it was totally a race issue and I was just like, well, first of all, first of all, here's the world that we live in and second of all, there's no way I'm gonna sit on the sideline and watch this happen. There were other people that were not stepping in and I was absolutely going to step in. So. This white guy is like, I'm gonna beat his beep, 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 beep. And I was just like, I looked at the, the white guy and I was like, if you lay a hand on him, you will be so bleeping sorry. And I must have scared him because he took a step back. And by the way, I was the shortest one there. I was 5'5", five five, did not, I was not wearing my platforms. The one day I don't wear my platforms. So long story short was, um, I started talking really loud, getting really angry. I know the store manager, they heard what was, it was like a debacle going on and the store manager came running over. We escorted the kid away and the white guy was escorted out by like stalkers from the back. So I guess it's just really interesting that I witnessed this today and like I was the only one that stepped in to help this kid. So the point of this story is don't tolerate a hate crime and don't be the person that stands on the sideline. Yes, you have the, the possibility of getting hurt, but I'm gonna be honest, I would be more upset with myself if I would have sat aside and watched that kid be injured. It was a child and this older man is an idiot. 
and my Taurus was full out today. Like my Taurus is just ready to run somebody over. Cat has been checking on me to make sure I'm okay. Cat is the only person on this planet besides men I've been in relationships with. Cat's the only person who has seen what my potential of anger looks like. And according to her, it is terrifying. So let's just get on with the story, shall we? Because I just, if I keep thinking about it, I'm just gonna like cause myself elevation and like I really need to balance my chakras and my energy right now. So <sighs> long story short, over my dead body, would I ever see a child or a hate crime take place and I wouldn't have stepped in to help? Please do the same. Okay, so today I'm going to be talking about a really cool slash interesting story about Ted Bundy. Serial killer, but it's gonna be tied into paranormal activity and while I do this, I've decided I'm going to do a full face of e.l.f. products. Most of these products I do like. There are some that I'm not a fan of. So what I'm gonna do in the description box below, if there's anything that I approve of or like products that I love, I will write it in parentheses next to each product. I feel like I look like I'm like 12 with no makeup on. I look like a baby and no brows. These are my natural, horrible, teeny tiny eyebrows. So I have two primers with e.l.f. I have the matte putty primer and the poreless putty primer. Um, I'm gonna be honest, like I have oily skin the matte putty primer, um, I've used a little bit, you can kind of see it. Um, it like makes my face feel slick. Like I guess it's supposed to be matte, right? It's supposed to be mattifying. But for some reason, this primer makes my makeup slide off. The other primer is better, but I thought I would kind of use like a mix of the two. A lot of people have asked if I compare this to the Tatcha primer, which is ridiculously expensive. I'm gonna be honest, I have oily skin and the Tatcha Putty Primer like does the same sort of thing um, because I have such oily skin. So I'm just using the Poreless Putty Primer now. None of them, none of these primers work for my skin type, but I will use them for today. I have oily skin to prone to breakouts, prone to acne skin, big time. Next, I'm going to use Flawless Finish Foundation. I have two colors. This is the Oil Finish Satin Finish, or Oil Free Satin Finish. I have colors Light Ivory and Vanilla. Um, I think I'm going to mix both of these because I'm pretty sure this one's a little, little too light for me and that one's a little too dark. This is actually a pretty good foundation for over-the-counter price point. I think it's like five or six bucks. It's pretty full coverage, especially when you use their... 16 hour camo concealer with it. All right, I have two 16 hour camo concealers. These concealers are pretty darn good too, but I actually found that I liked the hydrating camo um, satin finish concealer better. So just so you guys have the colors that I have, um, Fair Warm is super, super white. Super white. I use that sometimes. And then this is the medium sand, so it's a little bit deeper. It's a little bit deeper. But this one I actually use sometimes with my like everyday makeup because I don't use e.l.f. every day. I do like this foundation though. The foundation does not cause me like blemish breakouts. So this color is this is hydrating camo concealer satin finish in fair warm this is the this is my favorite out of all of them i have a blush palette with blush palette i think this is the light one which i'm gonna be honest those are some deep colors for me i don't wear it like i do wear blush but i like to be somewhat invisible i like to be just a little i do remember last time i dipped into this and it was like bam whoa Okay, so I'm gonna go with that one. I just wanted to make sure I dip into the right one because... Okay, so once again, I remember dipping into this before and it can be intense, so I'm actually gonna use this top one. And I'm gonna dip in and I'm gonna knock that off. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. Ooh, you see it? And that's with me knocking off excess. Ooh, be careful. 
You don't want to look like John Wayne Gacy. You know what I'm saying, boo? I mean, maybe you do. Maybe you do want to look. Like, no, no hate. No hate. If that's your thing, I want you to get it and go for it. Just stay out of my neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? Okay, not bad. There's some, I mean, I, I would probably use regularly, like, these two colors. Probably not so much these deeper ones, just because I shy away from deep blushes. Okay, this is the bronze palette, and I actually remember like thinking this wasn't so bad. Um, though I don't like when they give you squares like that. I just I'm just gonna I don't have time to be dipping into one little square. You know what I'm saying? It's not bad. The bronzer palette I think is better than the blush palette. FYI, this is the warm palette, the warm bronzing. Quattro palette or something. I'm not sure if I'm that might be wrong. I don't know. I ordered most of this stuff online. I just got the stuff that was that had the highest ratings. For some highlight, I bought this last year. This is white gold highlighter. And it actually I think has like a spray-on shimmer on the top. It's not it's not super I need something like bam. You know what I mean? But let's let's try this. Not really enough for me, honestly. So this is good. If you like a super subtle, inexpensive, good highlighter, this is great for you. Jelly highlighter. It's this Jelly and Elf. And it is in shade, I don't know. Um, Dew, D-E-W. So I'm not a huge fan of, of jelly highlighters, I'm gonna be honest. They scare me. I, I just, I feel like they're like a big commitment, you know what I mean? Like, with powder you can like mute it and, and work with it. Jelly is like, you, you put it there, it's there, and that's it. I'm just gonna see if with that like jelly base, if maybe this one will... Okay, a little bit, it sticks to it a little bit better. It's not, not perfect, it's not great, but I also like to wear really obnoxious obnoxious highlighters for me it didn't work this is just the regular brow pencil by elf I think it's like a dollar I think I have the color like brown blonde or something like that I remember trying to use this I just can't guys I'm really picky about my brows since I don't have any you know what I'm saying I'm just gonna go in with the Urban Decay brow blade I just can't believe there's adults out there why a 50 year old man who has lived on this whole planet for 50 years decided to be a racist and pick a fight with this freaking 13 year old like it just boggles my mind like the mentality that some people have anastasia powder and blonde Alrighty, so i'm gonna go in with a eyeshadow base i have some opinions on these okay I have two. I have All Stay Eyeshadow Primer. This is the more expensive one. This one's supposed to be like like five or six dollars or something. And I mean, I think it's kind of thick and like lathery and then it kind of turns like oily. So it goes on and it's kind of a thick pink sort of vibe. So this is how I apply P. Louise. Okay, we didn't do too bad today. This one though is not, not a winner. A bunch of e.l.f. well three I guess three is a bunch um, these are the eyeshadow palettes that I have I don't know if I should do earth and ocean 18 wonders or I think this was like one of the e.l.f. chocolate palettes I think I'm gonna go for dark and edgy today I feel like I always go for dark and edgy I don't know this peach plain peach color and I'm just gonna set my shadow base because I have oily oily eyeshadow oily lids see it did the thing it did the thing do you see it like crumbles in a way do you see that oh. so I think it's the eyeshadow base so I'm actually gonna just gonna take this off a little bit on both sides because I want my shadow to look I mean decent you know what I'm saying so I'm actually just gonna dip into P. Louise so we don't have like another <laughs> whoopsie, you know what I'm saying? 
P. Louise in point five. Who is ready for some creeps and cosmetics? So one of the um, reasons I got kind of into serial killer stuff, like I'd always been in paranormal, but serial killer stuff was I had, when I was a cosmetologist, I had a really unique clientele. And by unique clientele, I mean um, I had a couple people that worked for BMW um, in Los Angeles that would literally fly in to Denver just to see me to do like pedicures and manicures. I had um, I had a woman who is a trans woman. She um, lived in Texas and she worked for the United States government. She was a um, criminal psychologist and she actually was usually called out on all of the really dark cases around America to interview um, serial killers and find out why they were the way they were so she was really cool and so she kind of got me into this um, in my early 20s and she'd gotten to um, interview quite a few people but she would literally fly into Colorado just so that I could do her hair color she was one of the coolest people I'd ever met probably the coolest job if I didn't do film and paranormal that would probably be my like backup would be like criminal psychology just because I think it's so cool. So let's talk about Ted Bundy. So I, there is a ghost story here, but I want to talk about who he is in case you don't know who he is. I want to talk about who he is and what he did in case you're not familiar with his story. Ted Bundy was um, born in Vermont. Okay. He was born to like a pretty much like, you know, middle class sort of family. Um, his father was not around. It seemed really easy on the outside, but all of the sudden there were some dark secrets that sort of started to come out. And by dark secrets, I mean for most of his life, he believed his sister. He was told his sister um, was just his sister and his grandparents actually raised him early on in his life, later finding out that his sister was actually his mother and found out that his mother had gotten pregnant. She was sent to like a girl's home at the time because he was born um, November 24th of 1946 and he was born basically without a father. When the mother gave birth to him at this sort of like women's home, she had the opportunity to leave Ted Bundy behind as like an orphan child. So she stayed at this woman's home, came back home after she gave birth, told her parents what happened, and then her parents said, you have to go back home, you have to go back and get the baby. Like, you can't do that, like you have to raise the baby. She went back, she got the baby, and that was where the story of Ted Bundy started. After that, the grandparents pretty much helped raise him. When he got old enough, he found out that his, quote, sister, that he thought he knew his whole life, was actually his mother and she was unwed and then he found out the story of he was basically given up for adoption and then her parents had to go pick him up. So he probably had like a big sense of abandonment while he was growing up and that was probably what led to all of his like super issues as a child. There's also rumors, which this hasn't been confirmed, but they do believe that Ted Bundy's mother may have possibly been raped by her father, which is technically Ted Bundy's grandfather, and he was like an incestuous child, and that the grandmother didn't know what had happened. So that could also be reference to maybe like some mental health issues, if there, you know, we know having incestual relationships can cause um, physical issues and brain development issues, so who knows, that could have been contributing to um, his persona and what caused him to have so many issues. So back then, it was shameful if you were unwed and got pregnant, right? Like they tried to sweep it under the rug. So they basically wanted to keep it a secret. So 
they ended up moving to Tacoma, Washington. They claimed it was for the reason or purpose of being closer to Ted Bundy's mother, um, like an uncle that they had out there. But they think it was because she was such ashamed that she had had a baby with an unwed person. So eventually she meets Ted Bundy's stepfather and they end up moving as a family to Tacoma, Washington. So Tacoma, Washington, obviously is literally the opposite side of the world. And if you think about that for back in that day, that definitely would have been a huge move to try to attempt to hide something. So when they moved, they ended up moving into this little 1400 square foot home. Very small, obviously, to have Ted Bundy, his three siblings, and mother and stepfather living there. He lived there for most of his childhood, but not all, obviously. So fast forward, like September of 2016, this guy in Tacoma, Washington decides he's going to buy a house. He finds this house that's for sale and he thinks it's really this beautiful home that's up in Tacoma, Washington. It needs a lot of renovation and he doesn't really know what to do. So he decides he's gonna hire this huge construction crew to go in and totally like revamp the whole house. It does have like a little basement, but it's pretty much just like a 1400 square foot little, I mean, it looks small, like it looks small. So the contractors go into this house and they're like, okay, you know, like this is what the homeowner wants to do. They're gonna flip it. I assume they were gonna flip it and sell the property. But after the contractors arrive, a bunch of really like weird unknown things start to occur. The contractor didn't know what was going on or, or how to explain what was going on within the house. All he knew is it was scaring the construction crew and he needed to get something resolved quickly. Now from what I understand with this story is the contractor didn't really like fully believe too much in like paranormal stuff, but at first he got so nervous with what was happening that he decided to take Bible scriptures and he started to nail them and hammer them to the wild walls while construction was going on and he was also writing Bible scriptures in on the walls while the construction was happening, hoping to keep whatever was there at bay. Quote, he said, I'm not one to believe in a lot of this stuff, but this made me a believer. And the contractor's name is Casey Clopton. Apparently when they were doing construction of the windows, there would be words written in on the window if it was like etched in or if it was like um, super humid and it makes like water like um, condensation on the windows, there would be help messages that were written on the windows. And he said that it was starting to really freak him out. Furniture would get wedged between things and they didn't really know what to do or how to fix it because sometimes they would literally get locked out of rooms or doorways because a big piece of furniture had been moved like against the door or against wherever they were trying to get into. They would hear loud bangs and they'd go to look and it was actually like tools and furniture that had been completely toppled over and completely like moved by itself. The doors in the cabinets in the bathroom and the kitchen would open and close by themselves. So the question was, no one knew really what was going on with the history of this location. Like, we don't really know. How do we know, like, something's even attached to this house? Are we sure we're not just, like, going crazy? So the owner of the house started doing research and found out that was the house that, in 1955, Ted Bundy and his family moved into in Tacoma, Washington. Now obviously Ted didn't live there in his later years because Ted was obviously persecuted in Florida as we all know. Bundy was nine when him and his family moved into this house in Tacoma, Washington. It was a four bedroom, one and a half bathroom, so very small. 1,200 square feet, six people lived in that house. Four kids, including Ted Bundy, stepdad and mom. It's weird, my lights just flashed in here. Six people lived in that house. Six people lived in that house. So a lot of people started asking questions around the neighborhood saying, do you remember seeing Ted Bundy as a child? Because a lot of the neighbors that lived there in 1955 still owned the houses on the um, same lot today. And none of the neighbors actually could recall remembering him per se. They do remember the family. They remember seeing his sisters, but they never really remember seeing him. So the next question was, is if this house is haunted and there's all these weird things going on in this house, why this house? Why is it because this is the place where Ted Bundy was when he was most innocent? Is there a reason? Well, I ended up finding out that there is actually um, a child that he may have confessed to killing as one of his first killing sprees 
when he was 14 years old, still living in Tacoma, Washington. So a couple of blocks away, there was a little kid um, that went missing. When he was 14 years old, a little eight-year-old girl went missing and her name was Anne Marie. Anne Marie was last seen a couple of blocks away from the Bundy house. Now the reason they blamed Bundy could possibly been involved with this missing of this eight-year-old was a few reasons. One, he was the local paper boy, Ted Bundy was, and he would go out on early routes and he knew everyone in the neighborhood. Apparently there had been a person, or I guess in this case it could have been Ted Bundy as a child, who was peeping in the windows of Anne Marie's home. They could never pinpoint who it was. Once she actually disappeared, the only thing they could find was there was a footprint by the front window of the home that Anne Marie disappeared and the front window was open. So whoever got in, got in late at night and opened the window and came in that way and they literally walked out the front door. Carol Boone. Carol Boone. Carol, Anne Marie was never found. Carol Boone. Carol, Anne Marie was never found. They think that maybe Ted Bundy had a thirst for killing and had known who Anne Marie was on his route as a paper boy. Now, if this did occur, he would have hid the body somehow in Tacoma and he would have returned to his regular home in Tacoma, this home the contractor's having problems with, and he would have gone about his daily life. Now the creepier thing, the messages that they were getting from the contractors while they were like redoing the house, the messages would be etched in the windows and written in the windows with like condensation and also there would be sawdust that would fall down on the floor. The contractors would leave for the day and then they would come back and these words would be sketched in the floor. The words were help me and leave. Apparently the contractor would take his 11 year old daughter with him sometimes on visits to the Ted Bundy house and the 11 year old daughter would start crying for no apparent reason while they were inside just while he was taking notes to decide what to do and how to go about it as a construction worker. Apparently when the demolition started is when things got really bad. At first he thought it was just pranks and then he realized they were dealing with something much more serious. At this point the basement even flooded by itself and they also saw help me with the words written on the window. Apparently there was a sort of like, it was the, the condensation that had fallen between the screen and the window. And he said no one could have gotten and accessed the glass. So where it was written really scared him because the screen itself was like screwed in to the, to the glass panel. So no one could have just read, wrote it in with their hand. Apparently there was also a huge dresser that fell out completely face down at the very top of the stairs. Cell phones wouldn't work, they would drain. Anytime they brought electronics into the house, they would completely be drained. The word leave would frequently be found in sawdust on the floor. Apparently, the contractor was really convinced that there was just somebody breaking inside of the house. So he started going around asking the neighbors if they had seen or witnessed anyone breaking in the house or if they had witnessed any break-ins that had been going around like, you know, on an occurrence within the neighborhood. Maybe it was just the neighborhood and all of the neighbors responded with no. But when talking with the neighbors and saying there were strange occurrences going on, that is when the contractor found out that it was in fact once Ted Bundy's childhood home. Apparently when they did start to show the home, there were buyers that came in that were recognizing that it was Ch Bundy's childhood home. And apparently there were people that didn't want to buy it for that reason but the actual people that bought it didn't end up mentioning it, so they, they weren't sure if they knew. So before all of this kind of came to like a super halt, this, this eye pencil's not happening. It needs to go to Jesus. He ended up bringing in two pastors to have the house blessed. They went from room to room reading scripture, they blessed the entire house, the entire property from top to bottom. And after that, it seemed like the activity stopped or came to a halt. Apparently the house was completely redone to top to bottom from paint 
to paneling everything in between. Can you imagine innocently buying that house and you're like living in that house and like all of a sudden like there's weird names being etched in the like mirror and you're like, I can't even second guess buying this house. Like escrow's closed on it, it is what it is. So the house itself was built in 1946. So who was Ted Bundy is the next question. Ted Bundy is responsible for somewhere between 30 to 36 deaths of women and that includes and that includes decapitations and necrophilia. If you don't know what that is, google it because <laughs> I'm not we're not going to go there, you know what I mean? Although they do think Ted was responsible for way more than 36. They actually think the totals of the amount of people that he murdered or women that he murdered was probably around 100 because he basically went on an 11 year killing spree um, between several states. So nobody really knows how many people he actually murdered. So who's haunting that little house in Tacoma, Washington? Is it Ted Bundy? Or is it the little girl that he possibly murdered that could have been his very first victim? I guess we'll never know. 1970s serial killer, rapist, preferred decapitation for his victims, and necrophiliac. I don't think it can get much worse than that. I have two eyeliners. I think this one wasn't the best. So I'm gonna do my little faux, faux dot there gonna tr pray for this eyeliner so two things that I just find kind of interesting one is that Ted Bundy had escaped prison officials a couple of times before but one of the times he escaped he was actually living in Colorado which is my home state in Glenwood Springs he ended up escaping into the mountains of Aspen um, he was out for three days found an abandoned cabin that had a rifle inside of it ended up hijacking a person and got their car but then he was caught um, but I always kind of had that in the back of my head growing up in Colorado, knowing Ted Bundy had, you know, put his energetic stamp um, in our state. He ended up going to Florida, broke into a sorority, did some more brutal murders, ended up also um, killing a 12-year-old, and that was it. He was pretty much hung for it. Now, the second thing that I find interesting is that if you ever watch some of the tapes of Ted Bundy speaking with the judge that was in Florida pertaining to his case, they really liked him. Like he was able to swoon people like no other. And I remember when Zac Efron's um, movie came out on Netflix and so many people were like, oh my God, they like hired Zac Efron and they're sexualizing Ted Bundy. Yeah, cause that's how he got his victims, people. Just because you don't think the real life Ted Bundy is attractive doesn't mean he wasn't to women in the 70s. I mean, like, you're talking like 70s and 80s hair that guys rocked. Like, do you remember this? But then you have Ted Bundy, who's this like clean cut guy. Like, he looked trustworthy to women. And women were probably like, wow, do I either go for the rocker hippie dude? Or do I go for, you know, this clean cut guy that's like nice, educated, and interested in me. People don't want to sexualize Ted Bundy, but that was what he did. That He swooned women, that was who he was. Okay, this eyeliner is not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. It actually came out pretty good. Just like a plain black eyeliner by e.l.f. I do remember though it takes a while for it to dry down, so we'll finish talking about Ted Bundy. So he had had like a long time girlfriend, and then he ended up meeting this really weird girl named Carol Ann Boone. Um, while he was on trial in the 80s. And Carol would go to um, the facility he was at and um, the guards would let her in to see Bundy and the guards would let them sleep together. They think they were somehow paying the guards off um, to let them like have sex. And they ended up having a child. The child was conceived out of that. Now, Carol Ann Boone stuck by her man, like straight up for years, like saying Ted Bundy was innocent. And finally, three weeks before Ted Bundy's execution, he called Carol Ann and told her that he was responsible for the murder and death of the 36 women that they were accusing him of. He felt like he had to admit it to her because it was his final moments on this planet. After that, Carol Ann wanted nothing to do with him. She knew that she was left to 
raised their daughter alone and she completely disappeared off of the face of the map. Now, a few weeks ago, something just popped up and apparently Carol Ann Boone was admitted to a retirement home a couple of years ago and she ended up getting sick on or around January of 2018. Whatever she was sick with, she was like 70 or in her 70s, and she ended up contracting a uh, severe septic infection, and it ended up causing organ failure and she died, and nobody knew it till not too long ago. So it does make you wonder where her daughter is in all of this, because technically that's the only next heir or direct bloodline to Ted Bundy. Now obviously she didn't ask to be born through all of this, but I can't imagine being haunted and followed your entire life for something that your father did. She was born in the 80s. I think she was born a couple of years prior to me. So she's a little bit older than me, but I wonder if now that her mom has passed away, that she'll kind of come out of the shadows and talk about her mom's experiences and I mean, you know, you can't blame her mom. She was just probably like young and naive. And once again, Ted Bundy did what he does best, which is swoon women. The last step I have is some e.l.f. mascara. I'm gonna go in, it's just a plain black mascara. I have used this before. Um, jet black is the only thing that it's called. The only concern I have is I remember it sweats off pretty poorly. So I wouldn't wear this out where it might be hot. You don't wanna have like a full face of crying Dracula going on, you know what I'm saying? Last fun fact is, growing up in Colorado and obviously around my mother, she remembers when the dead, the Ted Bundy killing spree was going on. And everybody who lives in Colorado was just a big part of like outdoor ski life. I knew some women that were my mother's friends who thinks they actually encountered Ted Bundy because um, they remember his Volkswagen and he had tried to abduct them and they either denied his like request of wanting to flirt. One girl even thought she may have fought him off because she remembered being like assaulted by somebody with the Volkswagen clean cut, same sort of haircut. So it is really interesting how after all these years, he's still such a huge name you know, and part of society. It does make you wonder what happens though, like people with that dark kind of energy, like they have to stain the atmosphere. Like I don't think that can just go away. This is a black Milani. So over the counter, once again, um, drugstore lipstick and it's in bold matte in the color I Am Invincible. And I'm gonna go through and clean up the edges a little bit. Ew, days like this, I wish Kat was here. Cause I feel like I need to watch the craft. You know what I'm saying? So I have a couple of lip glosses I can put over. Um, this is a Wet n Wild and this is Stilla. I think I'm gonna go in with this super dark Stilla color. Strip Lash Adhesive in black. Latex free lash couture. I'm just feeling like this black glitter is like the winner of this whole thing. It's e.l.f. Um, I don't even know. All it says on the bottom is, wait, I think it does say something. Black magic, I think it's called black magic. But I just feel like it's like, it's the showstopper. So I'm gonna go in with a little bit more I feel like this applicator doesn't do much, but that's fine. I'm gonna use a brush. I think there's one more thing missing. I mean, this pony is extra, but I think there's still something missing. Hang on. Oh, so much better. That's exactly what was missing. So that is the final look today, all with drugstore products. That is so easy. Obviously, there were some winners for me and some non-winners. I hope you guys enjoyed Creeps and Cosmetics. Ted Bundy, he had a type. He liked the white girl with the long dark hair. I think I would intimidate him if I were ever to encounter Ted Bundy. Um, as you guys know, the Haunted Museum does have his glasses. Um, I don't think I've ever encountered his spirit. I don't 
think he likes strong women. I think he has a type and I think he goes for who he thinks is weak. I think he had a lot of mommy issues and I think that someone that can do that types of crime and murders over and over again, they pretty much just like don't have a soul. He did blame his crime sprees on quote, an entity that was inside of him that sometimes he could not control. A lot of criminal psychologists do believe that he had severe mental illness. Um, I'm personally just gonna state that when you look at his face, to me as an empath, you can definitely see two separate people in there. Um, I, I don't know if that means he was uh, split personalities, I'm not really sure. But to me, personally, just when you look in his eyes, like that old saying, the eyes are the windows to the soul, you can see that there's, there's some different things going on. He also claimed that he was addicted to violent porn and that when he was watching it, that he never, um, it wasn't enough, watching the porn wasn't enough, that he needed to um, eventually get to the point where he was acting out these fantasies and it was an actual addiction for him. He said, quote, for his execution, I would look and I would keep looking for more potent, more explicit, more graphic kinds of material. It's like an addiction. You keep craving something which is harder and harder, something which gives you a great sense of excitement until you reach a point that the pornography only goes so far. If you haven't seen Extremely Wicked, Shockingly Evil and Vile on Netflix with Zac Efron, you should watch it. It's really good. I think he did an amazing job playing the role of Ted Bundy. Psychologists believe that everything from Ted Bundy's traumatic childhood to a bad breakup with his first girlfriend to having enemy issues with his mother and his mother being somewhat of a homewrecker or a whore to also the porn addiction that all led up to influencing factors in creating a serial killer. Who do you think haunts? Please make sure you like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Please leave me good comments below. I'd love to hear back from you guys. Please leave me any products you want to see or any stories that you want me to tell. And until next time for creeps and cosmetics. We'll catch you guys later. Bye. I'm just saying, Ted Bundy better not come up to me. Even in spirit form because I will... I have a feeling that I would probably scare Ted Bundy's spirit more than he would try to like take me over like he did the other girls, you know what I'm saying?